What's going on traders? Welcome back to a, another Magic Call Monday or market and weekly market analysis. Now, Monday here for me here in New Zealand, obviously a Monday, early Monday morning for the rest of the world right now. Markets have opened up a little bit earlier here for us, while well, Monday started a little bit earlier for us, so I was able to catch a nice trade here. Currently holding a bit of a sell here on the Dow Jones or the US 30. Uh, so we'll see where it goes. Target's nice. Uh, kind of down here below. Now, if you guys did watch the previous video that I was filming or that we did post on our YouTube, we spoke about the three pin sort of formation. Uh, we've got it right here. So that was kind of the reason for the entry. We see these one uh, pin number one, two and three, creating that sort of triangle structure that we spoke about nice wicks to the upside. Okay, and we, eventually we had this, you know, Monday market open. So I kind of caught that trade entry pretty close to when the market had opened. We eventually got our first four hourly close nice and bearish to the downside. So hopefully we can get to continue to see some moves further to the downside. I've got a bit of a, a partial close probably down here about a one to one just over one to one where the market will reach some resistance if i start to see a reject there either close partials of it or if i see a, a sort of a rejection signal where the market's actually saying hey look i'm look, looking to turn around potentially going back to the upside i'll probably just close my entire position and just bank it it is a monday as it's the, also the week after nfp <clears throat> so i'm not really too fast about uh, you know taking big wins this week and um, you know if i can catch a one to one right now pretty be pretty happy for a Monday trading. Profits are always good on a Monday, uh, so we'll take it pretty chill. Okay, so we'll run through all the other pairs. I'm looking here at oil as well. Uh, this is the US oil uh, or WTI crude. I'm uh, currently looking for a potential move to the upside here. Uh, we can see we've had this sort of break and retest. Again, this is the four hourly term time frame. Uh, so if we zoom in just a little bit, we can see we're sitting here on this break and retest support. We're also, uh, if you did watch that previous video as well that we posted, um, we, did, we are also above this 8 EMA, which is a good indication the market's still looking to go further higher. We're starting to see the market slow down. So jumping over to the one hourly term time, Time frame <clears throat> we can see a bit of rejections we have come below the AEMA but I'm not too fast we have a lot of uh, rejections coming to the downside we're also seeing higher highs and higher lows being created so I'm pretty confident uh, that this market might look to go to the upside obviously uh, you know no trades yet so if we you know don't get anything yet uh, that's fine with me as well like I said it's Monday fairly quiet but I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty invested into looking at a trade for US or WTI to the upside. Potential targets that I could be looking for will probably be here uh, coming to about $110 a barrel. Will probably be a good target to look at. Uh, so we'll see where that goes to. Okay. Um, another, let's quickly have a look at USDJPY as well. <clears throat> USDJPY, not really seeing much. Again, this is a 4 hourly turn time frame. We can see we are sitting at a bit of a resistance. We're also sitting at a break in retest. Uh, but there have not, not really been any signals for me. Yes, we are sort of on an hourly kind of uptrend. We can see higher highs, higher lows, obviously being created. I want a quick look here at the daily time time frame to kind of get an idea of where we are. <clears throat> We can see it's fairly messy, um, so I'm not really too fast about looking at any trades here. So I'm not really going to spend a lot of time on ADJPY. We could, uh, you know, eventually maybe look at taking potential sales soon. You know, depending on how this next four hourly candle closes. Again, if we get a sort of a close where we get that three week formation, something similar to what we see right over here. Uh, so. Obviously, our wicks can be something along or any sort of rejection, but ideally, these three wicks would be ideal. So, if we can get one, two, and three over here with a nice red close, that would be pretty beneficial. We can start looking for pushes uh, to the downside. Now, target wise, we've got a couple of targets coming in. This is the four hourly term time frame. So, I'll probably be looking at the support right here about 92 point or 93, I would say, is the first initial target. And then looking to, you know, obviously we've got a bit of support slash resistance coming up here, 92.3. Uh, and then we also have that sort of the low of the zone that I'd be looking at to come to 91.8 as a pretty decent place to look for. Uh, but moving on to the Aussie dollar, obviously it'd be fairly similar to the ADJPY. Aussie dollar, I mean, pretty messy. There's not really much on here looking at the hourly term time frame. We can see there's lots of consolidation. Uh, we're rejecting on some zones. So for me, really, there's not much to see uh, unless we get a bit of an engulfing close, get a nice big close above the support, you know, we're currently sitting on right now. But right now, you know, there's not really much to look at over here. We're kind of stuck in a consolidation zone. So I'm not really looking at any potential trades on uh, Aussie, Aussie USD at the moment, similar to IED JPY, obviously. 
Uh, KJPY, uh, we could look for potential sales coming soon, depending on what's you know what sort of market structure we get. Again, this is a four hourly turn time frame. We're stuck in two nice big zones. Obviously, you guys know as any sort of trader, especially swing traders, uh, we want to be trading from zone A uh, to zone B, right? So you know these are the two zones we'll be looking at trading in right now. No rejections really. Uh, if we can get any sort of rejections like we saw previously, um, you know, golfing candles, pin drops, anything along the lines of that, um, you know, that we talk to our students about, we can look for some good entries, obviously take profits. We'll be back down at uh, 103.5 as or just above 103.5, I'd say 103.7. Um, you know, currently where we're seeing this market being rejected, could be a good place to look for. Looking on the hourly uh, term time frame. You know, there's not really much. Um, you know, we start to see some rejections, but obviously looking at this market structure, we're seeing still a lot of strength in the movements to the upside. Markets opened up, you know, fairly weak. Uh, we're seeing a lot of consolidation. So, you know, I still think it does look like there's a bit of movement potential to go further higher. So right now, you know, nothing really, there's no any signals for me at the moment. Um, if we do get a rejection, that's ideally what I'll be looking for. Euro JPY. Uh, Euro JPY again. <clears throat> we start to see some moves further higher. We just recently broke above. <clears throat> excuse me, breaking above. I've had a horrible cough uh, this week, so we'll see how I can go. <laughs> see how I go throughout this video. <clears throat> but we broke above this nice resistance above our 8 EMA, so we could get some potential good moves. Uh, looking further higher, you know, there's a lot of potential, lots of clean traffic to the upside. So I'll be keeping an eye on this Euro JPY pair, you know, seeing if we can get any closes above this current sort of candlestick structure. We have a bit of a consolidation zone right here. Uh, so I will draw, uh, let's get a horizontal ray here so we can have our, you know, obviously our bottom of our zone over here and then the top of our zone, I would say above here. So if we get a close above this uh, 0.39, you know, roughly 0.39, 200 mark zone or wherever this is, you know, we can look for potential moves for the higher. So that's kind of what I'll be looking for right now. Again, consolidation. We're still in a bit of, you know, we can see a bit of rejection here from resistance, you know, previously on the 5th of July. So I'm not right now, you know, there's no real confirmation for me to go into. If we can see here, you know, obviously if this current candle, we've got 34 minutes left for it. So if it does close nice and, you know, sort of above these wicks, a nice big bullish close, or if we even better if we can get a close above the zone, <clears throat> that'll be ideal to start to look for moves to the upside. Now, obviously targets, we've got a lot of zones coming in inside of the 140 mark zone. So, or just below the 140 mark zone, we can use this wick as well as a bit of an estimate and um, where the market could start to slow down. It could potentially reject on as well. So, you know, I would say 139.8 to 140.7, 140.6 is a good place to look for, for TPs here on Euro JPY. Uh, the Kiwi, Euro Kiwi um, consolidation, we're rejecting support, very similar <clears throat> to the Euro JPY as well. Obviously, we're rejecting support. We, Euro JPY has kind of moved above ready, but Euro Kiwi is currently sitting on it. So if we can get some nice rejections, if we can get any sort of candle confirmations over here, uh, we'll see there could be a very nice potential move to the upside. I'm really, I'm really liking the structure of this. Uh, so, you know, any trades, I would say potential trades coming up could look anything along the lines of this. Now, yes, this is a four hourly term time frame trade. So we're going to be looking for to uh, take profits on our four hourly sort of structure. Now we are also inside of a zone. So I would say top of the zone, uh, we could probably look at placing it over here. I'm not going to use that top top of the zone here at uh, 1.69 500. Um, you know, it's a bit far away. And we've got a lot of rejection inside. This could be a potential um, trend reversal. So we could come up into any of these zones with it you know, the current T sort of TP structure is at and look to reject to push further down to the low side. But overall targets, I would say would be 1.66840 as I've got here on my charts, which gives us a pretty decent 3.7 to one risk reward ratio. Okay. Um, so it's fairly nice, but you know, keeping in mind, we have to look at these zones where the market could reject. So that could be a sort of an initial take profit target. And then once we break past, uh, we can look for other targets. Now, um, you know, markets have sort of changed, especially for swing trading. We're not really getting very fluid movements recently. Uh, so I would say, you know, take profit, partial take profits could be something you could implement into your trading, especially if you're a swing trader. Uh, Euro, Euro dollar, I mean, Euro dollar, looking at, let's have a look here on the higher term time frames. You know, we're in a big downtrend, 
daily i don't see any support weekly there's no support so really we're kind of almost not completely but we're kind of trading in uncharted territories you guys can see this is the monthly term time frame the last data we had here was uh 2003 you know in january 2003 um so this could be pretty major levels we could see some major rejections uh, so right now i would look at you know if i was going to trade this euro dollar i would look at current hourly or four hourly market structure for potential trades um but i'm not really looking at anything here on euro dollar so i'm not going to waste too much time on it um, we could see a potential move to the downside if we can get a close below i would say you know this sort of structure over here and engulfing close we can look for moves to fill this current wick um, obviously i'm not going to look to go below it because like i said we're on uncharted territory uh, technically speaking you know for all the way from a daily four hourly you know well, hourly four hourly daily all the way to monthly um you know weekly whatever we can see that there's not really much price like i said all the way from 2003 was the last price we were in so I'm going to take it as the market comes. I'm going to trade it as I see structure develop and use, you know, other psychological round numbers for my entries or sorry, take profits or stop loss zones. Um, and then I'll use, you know, entry stop losses as well for, you know, current market structure. Okay. Pound Aussie, Messi, consolidation. I'm not really going to waste much time on this. It's looking really bad. So I'm just going to skip right past that. Uh, GEP, JPY, <clears throat> nice sort of similar structure. We can see and a nice trade we had last week i spoke about this in our previous video so if you guys want to see the reason for entries on trades like this um you know go check out that previous video uh but we can see break of a support of a resistance so we could get some nice break and retest here look to push further higher we've got some resistance coming up uh so you know we need to be aware of these zones so if i pull this all the way across we can see there are some zones coming in uh, but we'll see what uh, what's going on here if we can get some good trades potential buys would look anything along the lines of something like this depending on where these candles close obviously you know we have to keep this in mind one to one could be a you know case in this because there's a lot of strong resistance we saw the market really rejecting on it last time we're also seeing strength to the downside comparing the moves so we're seeing big strong market structure coming down right and when, when we go to the upside, we're seeing the market actually struggle quite a bit. So keep that in mind if you are going to uh, buy into this GPJPY. You know, I would say we're pretty much be in the, I would say we almost be in the clear once we can get above the zone, above 165, 200. We can almost say we're kind of in the clear to look to go higher. Uh, but, you know, as US, as the European market does kick in, we could see some volume actually help us push past the zone. So look for structures. This could be a fairly nice buy to the upside. <clears throat> Uh, GU, uh, you know, we're sitting sort of, I'm not really, I mean, it's nice. we got a nice downtrend, but uh, for me, there's not really much I'm looking at. We're kind of stuck in between two current zones. Um, so I'm not really too bothered about this, you know, about this mark right now. We've got a lot of opportunity already on a Monday. Um, you know, Tuesday's another week, another day. Right, so we'll see what happens on Tuesday. Um, like I said, I'm not going to try and force any trades. We should never really force any trades, especially on the Monday. So let's have a look at Kiwi Dollar. Um, Kiwi Dollar hourly term time frame. Let's have a look where were we? There we are. Uh, we can see put consolidation right. So we kind of stuck in this slow consolidation to the upside. I would say, you know, if you guys are familiar with Elliott Wave. We're in a bit of a corrective phase right here or you know any market sort of structure we're in a bit of a corrective phase um we could potentially look at trading a potential pattern break so if we have a look at this over here we could look at you know sort of market structures breaking out of these patterns but you know most likely to the downside in this case if we get a rejection on this zone so if we get a rejection on this hourly time frame um lower trend line of the structure we could look for potential bias to go back to the upside i would be just a bit aware so instead of placing my take profits at the top of that zone i'll be looking at this resistance coming up right over here we saw the market previously reject gave us that tweeze up top um you know we started to see the market reject on that zone okay so that could be um this could be a place to look for take profit instead of you know continuing to move our take profit as this market reaches that this top trend line so i would use that resistance as a tp zone if we can come to reject on this now if we get a break <clears throat> of the zone we have internal support and resistance zones i would say this one's probably the most most likely one to look at so we could potentially be seeing something that happens like this and it breaks past or something that blows past this and uses this as a rejection of resistance to push for the lower so we've got a couple of options of this nothing yet um obviously as of 
for today. So I'll have to wait probably, you know, middle of the week or even tomorrow we could see some potential entries here on Kiwi Dollar. USD CAD had some pretty nice, uh, had a pretty decent trade USD CAD to the upside and to the downside uh, last week. We can see we're rejecting this now. This is a four hourly support as well. So we can see a bit of a rejection and not really any entries yet. Uh, you know, if anything, we might have missed one back down here when we got sort of this rejection over here, especially with these kind of structures. So currently for me right now, we're in stuck in between these hourly zones. Okay, so ideally I want to see this market either come back down or depending what happens here, you know, we've got, if you're into more of a, you know, more of a shorter term trading, we can see we've got a break and retest here. So we can potentially look at moves, you know, it's sort of a trade that looks like this, depending on actually where this candle closes above that EMA as well. And targets, you know, nice three to one, 3.4 to one to that top zone. So this could be something as well. USD CAD is another trade. <clears throat> I'll be looking at considering that I'm also, you know, got the sell on the US 30, right? So, you know, USD CAD on a buy could be pretty promising, right? So obviously, as we see the US dollar strengthen, we tend to see uh, the Dow Jones weaken and vice versa. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on this. I'll keep an eye on this. We've got about 25 minutes left for this candle to close. This could be a fairly nice trade. We also have a bit of a, you know, that three wick structure. This, this third wick is a little bit small for me, but we have that nonetheless, those three pins playing out very nicely. Okay, rejecting on this. We've also, if we do close above here, beautiful engulfing candle, which will be very nice for the market to push for the higher. Okay, uh, USD JPY. Let's have a quick look at that. Obviously, if we trade USD CAD, we're not going to be trading USD JPY because we'll be double risking. Unless you guys want to half your risk on one trade and uh, you know add that risk onto the other trade, that's perfectly fine. But don't double trade, guys. That's a you know it's a very big issue that a lot of traders do as they trade multiple pairs. You know that's that's the one issue with trading multiple pairs. You have to be very strict with yourself. It is a bit difficult because, you know, a lot of trading psychology teachers, I teach my students as well, you know, if you see a trade, you should take it because you don't know whether that one's a winner or a loser. Um, so for me, you know, what, what I'm doing is, you know, when I see a trade, I look through the markets and I see which one's the best looking trade. And then whichever one, you know, looks the best, follows my signals the best and, you know, just looks overall, you know, like a better entry, I'll take that trade instead of the other one. Um, if I really can't you know, if I really can't tell the distinction between the two and I really say, well, these two are pretty equal in entries, um, you know, I would look to <clears throat> either if I really, really am wanting to get into this trade, I would look to partially close the other one and then get into the other one. Uh, but I only partially close the one trade once it gets into profit. So I never close the trade early um, into break even, you know, if I really want to do this. But that that very, very rarely happens. OK, rather, I'll just stick to the trade I have and let the other one, you know, do its thing there's always be another trade. And again, guys, it is Monday, so don't stress out too much about missing uh, trades for the Monday, okay? Uh, gold, lots of consolidation. Um, we can see right here, we've, we're stuck in between two zones right over here. So obviously we have our you know, top of the consolidation, the bottom of the consolidation, this is the hourly term time frame. So for me, uh, no trades on gold until we can break above these and start to retest on this. Um, you know, gold has not really been giving a lot of retests as of lately. So when we break out of consolidation, for example, we see over here, uh, you know, we're just seeing gold just run. So we had a consolidation zone over here. Um, we had a bit of a retest with this candle, um, but there was no real like, you know, major retest like we see, uh, let's say, for example, where the market, you know, is, ins is inside of a zone. So let's get my pen out when the market is inside of a zone and then breaks breaks out and then comes back down like that to retest. You know, we're not really seeing that. Rather, we're seeing sort of the market break out, give us a little quick retest, and then, you know, like with that candle then pushing down. So if you guys want to trade breakouts, you know, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I've slowly started to been trading breakouts, you know, considering how the market's been recently. Um, you know, it's been very, it's just been kind of moving. There's no there's no sort of breath in the market or catch, the market doesn't really catch a breath. Um, as of recent, so you know, we obviously we're going to have to adapt our trade trading strategies. I'm not completely switching over. I'm not abandoning my my ideology of the market. Um, you know, I'm not going from technicals to indicator packs or to completely different trading style. I'm still using the exact same. I'm just slightly changing my entry signals, right? So instead of waiting for candlestick confirmations, I you know the market still follows the same structure as it develops, as more traders kick in, as more you know more different liquidity styles and different psychologies jump into the market. 
you know, the market will ever so slightly change and we have to adapt to that as traders. Okay, but the things that will never change is, you know, I'm, my risk management, <laughs> it'll never change. Obviously, you'll never risk wrong. Um, your, the way you think about the market or, you know, your psychology wise, so that should never change. You know, your fear, greed, um, those kind of things, they should never change in the market. But things that can slightly change are, you know, the way you look at the market, whether it is, you know, waiting for different sort of confirmations or whether you're going to be start being a bit more aggressive because the market calls for it. Okay. So we have to pay attention to that. And that's why, you know, it has to be something you love. If you guys don't love trading, um, you're wasting your time because you really have to love and kind of adapt and grow with the market. But that's kind of the trades that we're looking at, guys. Hopefully you guys catch some good trades today as well as the this uh, session does start to kick in. If you guys did catch anything good, let us know down below. Or if you, you know, make some losses, comment down below, let us know. We'll be happy to break those down and, uh, you know, look at them with you and discuss the sort of trades that you might have missed. Or, you know, like I said, if you took any bad or losing trades, uh, we'll be happy to break those down for you and kind of get an idea of, you know, whether you're making a psychology mistake or technical mistake or uh, anything along the lines of that. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Good luck with the week of trading. Enjoy the week of trading. The markets are looking fairly good. NFP is finally over. So uh, let's get into it, guys. Stay tuned. Trade safe.